Today I'm going to talk about the Grand Seiko and stuff like uh, a few years ago I would be asked which watch bands would I recommend and I would often say Reggae, Jeju Le Cool, Lander and Sonna and Grand Seiko and quite often people would say Grand Seiko However for those brands that I would see at the time the excellence of the Japanese Spurs products was clear to see In 2017 Grand Seiko became a standalone brand and the firm wrapped up its marketing and retail activities Today, the merits of Grand Seiko ownership are known to many. Indeed, the brand's peerless blend of readability, precision, wear and comfort has led to strong following among regular watch buyers of luxury timepieces, as well as die-hard collectors like me. Grand Seiko makes quartz watches, featuring the best quartz movement on the market, the Calibre 9F. It makes mechanical movements, featuring the ubiquitous Swiss Rescatement, and recently it launched the incredible high beat movement, the Calibre 9 SA5, which features a dual impulse escapement. It also includes an overcoil and free spawn balance. However, today I'm going to focus primarily on spring drive. Often likened to a cow with a hybrid engine, the spring drive movement unites mechanical and electrical power. It took an incredible 22 years to develop the spring drive movement, and it first appeared in handwired form. It then took a further six years to produce the self widening spring drive movement, the Caliber 9R65, fitted to this watch. Like a conventional mechanical watch, the spring drive movement contains a mainspring, a small dose of electrical energy created by the action of the mainspring winding excites the crystal oscillator. This in turn sends a signal to an integrated circuit, which controls the rotation of the glide wheel. The glide wheel is unidirectional and the flow of time is controlled by the braking effect acting upon the glide wheel. A notable difference with spring drive is that the central sweep second hand serenely glides, unlike the curvation mechanical movement which advances in small steps. This particular watch, the pair reserved is 72 hours. It has a stated accuracy of plus or minus one second a day. This particular watch, the Snowflake SBGA011, is approximately 10 years old, is my watch, and it has the pre-2017 branding. Grand Seiko first introduced Snowflake dials back in 1971, however this is probably the, the Snowflake dial that came to most people's attention a few years back. Instead of being spared by a freshly laid in snow outside the company's Shinshu watch studio, the textured dial surface is beautiful. Highly polished multifaceted hands and indexes engage with light, augmenting readability. And despite the absence of luminescent treatment, the mere suggestion of light brings the hand into view. The pair reserve indicator is positioned at 8 o'clock, and the day aperture is framed with a fine sliver of bright work. The attention to detail is incredible. Each of the 31 date bows on the date disc has been optimised to aid readability. The case measures 41mm in diameter. Franseco described them to as high intensity titanium. In Europe, we're more accustomed to talking about grade 2 and grade power titanium. The precise composition of the Franseco alloy is unknown. However, due to the widespread use of hand polish surfaces, I suspect it's probably close to grade 5. And that's because with grade 2 you just can't achieve that gleaming surface. The material is hypoallergenic, it's corrosion resistant, it's light, and it's very strong. In fact, its hardness makes polishing very challenging, but somehow the crowd say you've pulled it off with the plug. It's fantastic. The polishing is termed Zeratsu polishing. And basically what happens is the case is held in, in a bespoke hand tool and positioned against a rotating vertical disc, which is being painted with a mildly abrasive liquid. The machine operator not tried to change the shape of the case, but merely seeking to embellish it. The resultant finish is as smooth as silk, it has crisply defined edges, and it bestows its lovely distortion-free reflections. The modern-day equivalent of snowflake is the SBGA211. It sells for about £5,800, it's a lot of watch for the money. Since it was spent in 1960, Grand Seiko has come a long way, but it has repeatedly shown that it subscribes to the concept of Kaizen, continuous improvement. As brilliant as my Stoneflake is, the firm has since produced even better watches, featuring case that now juxtaposed not just polished surfaces, but hairline finishes as well. If you look at the movement, for example, the Calibre 9 r Fire was a huge achievement, but now the Calibre 9 r 2 features two barrels, it will run autonomously for 120 hours. It's finished to a much higher standard. It's even more precise, with a stated accuracy of plus or minus half a second a day. Yes, Grand Seiko's come a long way. And 
based on the evidence, I see very little reason why it won't continue on this upward trajectory for many years to come. Grunzeko make incredible watches.